Welcome back, everybody. We are back with the owner and executive chef of Union Restaurant in Pasadena, Chef Bruce Coleman. Today, we are yeah. so excited. You are going to make yeah. your amazing orquete with fennel sausage. You say that so amazingly well. Orquete. You know what else I say? It's pretty awesome. Pretty well? What do you say pretty well? Next Celebrity Apprentice winner, Matt Eisner! <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a reason to bite your nails, I right? Know. I mean, really. I mean, Matt. Wow. And by the Matt. way, where have you been for the whole show? I, I've been doing press. I actually just, so it's coincidentally a guy who was a fan of Celebrity Apprentice, Anthony Cumia, who I was doing his podcast, who loves Home and Family and loves oh, watching Oh, well, we should say hello to him. Oh, hey, Anthony. We we're, um, so, uh, set the scene. We have the video. Set yes. the scene. Where were you? So, Let's... this last night, again, you know, it, it was a very fancy party in my backyard. Um, <laughs> okay. My best friend flew down from San Francisco. The guy, actually, who I told him about the Emily Jacob kiss, Steve Myers, was there. Oh, no. So, the, he, you have to go back a few episodes, all but all you'll find it. Friends. This is actually the West Coast feed, because East Coast was a bit of a maybe not appropriate for Hallmark reaction. <laughs> so, this, this is the video of me watching the moment again on uh, the uh, West Coast feed. And I just have to say that, Matt, you are the new celebrity apprentice. Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, Governor. Oh, so Thank you. Oh, no, wait. So, oh, God, that's scary. Oh, what are you doing to me? I'm an animal. I'm the governor. Well. So, that's Stogie. Schwarzenegger gave me that stogie after the Harry Potter challenge. I said, oh. the only way I'll smoke it is if you say my name at the end of the show. Oh. And so I don't smoke. That was just, that yeah. was a special stogie. You know, that, that wasn't was my changed. question. The real question was, why weren't we invited? Yeah. But you know what? We'll get yeah. to that later. <laughs> we'll that later. <laughs> We're back because the roof right going to lose. Like, just, they don't want to cry. Oh, don't even guys. match. I'm a winner, too. I know. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. are a yeah. winner. Yeah. 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 We're going to be winners I, tasting I your pasta. the crap out of Bobby Flay. You Yes! I do. Wait, wait, physically or in the no, competition? No, 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 no. Oh, I, I, I didn't want to endorse really physical guy. violence. Really guy. So. No, in the, in the, in the ring. Okay. Okay. Did you do it with your That's orchiette? Awesome. No, uh, fettuccine carbonara. Oh, I love ah, it. Italian. Carbonara. Yeah. 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 Let me ask you something. When did your love affair with orchiette begin? So, um, my first date with my wife, now wife, was on Valentine's Thank Day you. in Chicago. Ooh. Oh, and sweet. I, Thanks. <laughs> and uh, sweet, loving boy so we went to an Italian restaurant and we both ordered this dish. And that's when you knew. That's when I you knew. knew. Could she pronounce orquiette? No. <laughs> I don't work with her. <laughs> All right. So you say do not be intimidated to don't make be intimidated. pasta it's at home. It's so easy to make pasta at home. It's flour and water. That's it? That's oh, it. Okay. And you can either do it by hand, you can do it in a mixer, and you end up with this. So to make orquiette, all you do is you cut your, your ropes like this and cut these little nuggets of dough. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Just dip your thumb in some flour. Is that any type of flour? This is Durham wheat flour that I use to make this. Okay. And then I flatten it out like that, and then I push hard, and I drag it over my finger. That's it. And it makes the and little that's angel's it? ears. That's it. And it looks so fancy. Now you just have to do it like 500 times. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Do you well, need to let the dough rest? Yeah, you always let your dough rest. So when you make your dough, it's going to be tense. The flour is not fully hydrated, so it takes a while. And I typically like to do it overnight. But... Four to six hours is probably. So you could do it in the morning time. and yeah. dinner ready. Totally. What, you? Makes, what makes your dough tired that it needs to rest? Uh, <laughs> me working with it, I. No, but like, what does it mean when it rests? What's so it? when it when it rests, what happens is when you mix something like that, it gets very tense. Oh, okay. So in order to be able to work, if I if I didn't let it rest and I try to do this, it would just spring back. And it might bite its uh, nails. Or, or it, and it might bite its, its nails tense. exactly. You see. Okay. So you have paired yours with sausage. And fennel, why? Wow, so, uh, fennel sausage, um, I really like. You know, we, the traditional Italian sausage always has fennel seed. And what I do is I also roast fresh fennel, mm -hmm. and then I grind it with the meat. Mm. That's, and you, got, you actually did that earlier today? I did today. that earlier today. Let's take a look at this. Mm. Walk us through that. So all I have is all these beautiful ingredients, the chili, and that's the fennel and oregano and Meyer lemon zest. Meyer lemon, interesting. I know, and then a little bit of salt and you just mix it and then put it all back through the meat grinder. Right. And while you do that, I'm gonna drop this yeah. over here. I'm gonna put a little oil. Oh, it's so there you go. So you in it goes. It. It's so flavorful. So do you yeah. need a meat grinder then to do this? You do need a meat grinder. You can get a great KitchenAid attachment. It's really easy. 
I think KitchenAid has attachment for just about anything now. Yeah, isn't that yeah. true? <laughs> Including nail biting. Exactly. Nail biting and nail biting yeah. attachment, yeah. yes. It'll bite important. And how long do you have to brown the meat? So I like to let it go for a minute or so just to get it started and get a little get a little flavor. You know what I mean? Mm. And you then you put everything in there together. Oh, yep. I love that. See, it's all starting to brown nice. You can smell the aroma of the fennel seed and the lemon and as well the, the braised fennel. And then all I'm going to do is just start throwing in some of my broccoli. You can use rapini. Traditionally, it's with rapini, but a lot of people don't like bitter. Right. Yeah, well. Um, found that out. <laughs> so uh, this is a, a good alternative for that. And it's okay. easier to find, you know, broccolini or broccoli at the store. But would you have to cook the broccoli or broccolini longer than the rapini? No. Actually, rapini, I usually cook a little bit longer than broccoli. Oh, you do? But okay. this, yeah, this, and this broccolini is super tender. Okay. So you can even eat it raw if you wanted to. So is then, that really, is broccolini more tender than regular broccoli? Yeah. Okay. No. It's, a, it's like a young broccoli. So then I, I throw in my aromatics, my sliced garlic and my chilies, and it's really important to cook your garlic properly because, again, going back to bitter, if you burn garlic, mm -hmm. it gets very bitter. If you cook it too fast, you're going to have this, like, brown edge around the slice of garlic and then a raw middle, and you just, it's not, it's, it's okay. doesn't, not ideal. It doesn't taste so good. Yeah, yeah, and it kind of ruins the yeah. meal then. Yeah. Yeah. So but then I've got By the some, way, if you, if you, you know, if you have that someone special, you both have to have the garlic. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, raw garlic. Yeah. Not good on, no. a, date, on a first date, you know. Not at all. Or any date. What? So then I drop my pasta in the salted water here. Got some salted boiling water. Mm. What gives the pasta this, the brownish color? Is it whole wheat or? It, so it's a whole grain pasta. Oh. And so I have, I work with a local flour mill called Gristin Toll in Pasadena and she mm. mills all my flour. Oh. She mills my polenta. It's fresh every week. And that's why your you restaurant is it. so It's unbelievable. Good. Yeah. Oh. You can tell it's all fresh ingredients. I mean, you're, it's one of the greatest restaurants in Los Angeles. Wow. Thank you. It's difficult to get a reservation, but I think uh, we know people now, so hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Matt Eisman can get yeah. me yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Right. Well, winners eat there. So I oh. Oh. No, we're all winners. Wow. Did I already do it? Wow. It's, already it's, already it's already gone yeah. to your head, my yeah. friend. Yeah. Wow. Already oh, gone winner. to your head. Maybe another so you put press some butter in as well. I did, yeah. yeah. I just put a little bit of butter. Kind of mellows out the lemon. It, it binds the sauce together along with the starchy pasta water. And I'm just going to let this cook for a minute. I'm telling you, Debbie, this is delicious. I want you to taste it. Please, sir. But I have some more. Some more. So good. So you cook the pasta for just a few minutes then? Yeah, not even. Just a couple minutes. Uh, this is a, a pretty thin... It's pretty thin noodles, so it cooks really fast. This is durum wheat, uh, but I've, I mean, I've made pasta with all different kinds of milled grains, like yeah. alternative grains like farro mm. and... Wow. Oh, interesting. Farro's great. W, you have to try that. Salt flour. Yeah. It's so, right. so good. 